Schaub gets oh. up and hammers it home. Yes, yes. Yes. Bounces it inside to Mooney, who jams it home. To a cutting Jogo for the two-handed jam. It's to Fluger for the two-handed jam. Swatted by Durham. Jams with two. Another rejection. Hello again, Irish fans, and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball with Mike Bray. I'm Jack Nolan, and Coach, the week began with an impressive victory at Boston College featuring a breakout game from junior Nick Jogo, a career-high 21 points. Heck of a road win for us, and Nick gave us a great lift. We put him in the starting lineup, and it was neat to see our offense flowing up there closer to 40 minutes. We've struggled with that this year. And you had a lot of confidence going down to Miami, hoped that that momentum would continue, but after a quick start, it kind of disappeared. We almost teased ourselves a little bit, Jack, because we got off to a great start offensively and then really couldn't score the rest of the game. Uh, Had some great looks. I think Miami's defense gets some credit for it. So disappointing we couldn't get both of them on the road. But this year especially, with all the struggles you've had, one one week is good. A one and one is week is pretty idea. good for us, you know. And if we started February one and one, I told them on the plane coming back, let's uh, let's see if we can move forward here with down the stretch. All right. When we come back, we will take you out to Chestnut Hill for Notre Dame's thirteenth straight victory over the Eagles of Boston. went into the thought process to give Nick Jogo his first start of the year? I think the way he competed against Duke, um, I've, he played 20 minutes, he was active, he was competing, he was playing hard, and I thought he deserved it. He has had a great attitude all year, um, and he delivered for us in Boston. There have been times he's come out and played too quick. This game, he came out with great energy, not too quick, and he scores your first eight points, including two deep threes, and gave you a boost that you carried for 40 minutes. He really did lift us the whole way, and I think, you know, at this point, it's his third year in our program. He's calmer, he's playing with nothing to lose. He used to play a little nervous and, uh, you know, he, but certainly the energy he gave us, the driving to the basket, certainly the shooting, the defense and the rebounding is underrated too. He rebounds for us too. Career high, team high in the game, 21 points, but also three rebounds and two assists. Yeah, he just, it was just an all round game for him and, and, and he lifted his teammates. You know, we we need that, you know, can we get a guy in there that lifts the other group through this very difficult season? And he did that for us. And he helped pull some other guys along, as you just said, Prentice Hub came out firing. He hit four of his first six shots, gave you 10 points in the first half. Well, when Prentice can score, and I think Prentice is playing pretty well right now, he's on a pretty good run since Duke where he's being aggressive, he's getting into the lane, making plays, shooting it better. We need him to be aggressive and we need him to push the ball in transition. You led by as many as 10 points in the first half, but you knew BC was going to make a run. They have some great scores led by Kai Bowman. He had 13 in the first half, 25 in the game to cut the lead to five at halftime. But one of the reasons you had that five point lead was a big three Dane Goodwin hit with 30 seconds left in the half. Yeah, Dane, I thought, gave us good stuff too. And it was really a great pass from Nick to find him in the corner to knock that three down. You know, Dane continues to get better and get adjusted to college basketball. There's nights he's been knocked back, but he is a competitive guy. And you talked about how well Hub was playing, not just scoring, he also had four assists in the game. You start the second half with a brilliant Hub pass to John Mooney for a dunk. Yeah, I think that's one of the things Prentice has done even better is finding our role guy, and it's Johnny a lot of times going down the lane. He has been even better with that. And again, he just 
just continues to get more confident. Now UNBC was going to make another run, and they did. They finally tied the game at 39, but TJ Gibbs answers right away with a beautiful finger roll. Yeah, I thought for TJ Gibbs, he got into a rhythm, really, Jack, that we've been searching for, you know, getting into the lane, driving, making plays for us. And when he can get into the lane and make plays for himself and other people, it, it really helps him and it really helps us. Now, BC, in front of a raucous home crowd for them, actually took the lead four times in the second half, but never by more than two points. And every time you immediately answered with points. Yeah, I was really proud of our group. You know, every time their crowd got into it, and you're right, I think they had a sellout. It was a great, you know, great atmosphere in there. We came back poised offensively, made a big shot, made a big play, got a big defensive stop. You know, very proud of our young group to do that on the road. And you kind of took control of this one midway through. They took the lead for the last time with 10 minutes left and you answered with a 10-1 run. Yeah, we, we got it. Again, our offense was really flowing, and, and it's I'm just hoping it's something we can find again here down the stretch. It's it's escaped us for most of the season, but we were moving the ball, different guys making shots. Our spacing was good. We had a little dip, little smaller lineup in there that could really space the floor. And we talked in the pregame about the need for not just the third guy to step up scoring. You've had two in every game this year, have yeah. big nights, but maybe a fourth guy and boy you got it in this game Jogo 21 but TJ had 19 Hub had 16 and of course Mooney had 15. Yeah I mean when you can get to a third and a fourth score then you have a chance to win in this league you know we had we got it into the 70s you know we have been stuck scoring in the 60s and of course against Miami it was only in the 40s but you know you got to get that thing into the 70s and to see four guys score the ball was was good for us and if it was not for Jogo's great performance this would have been the story your two guards who have the ball the majority of the time shot 13 for 21 combined for 35 points and not only made threes but I love the way they both attacked the basket and finished yeah they really drove it and and again we need them to get in there we need them to score we need to go in and have them make plays for us you know they're in the top 10 and assist to turnover it's hard to have even one off the floor for a long period of time that they're our best decision makers but when they're scoring too as well as distributing that gives us another element offensively and of course John Mooney was the person we expect him to be the player we expect him to be his eighth straight double-double 14th on the season 15 points, 13 rebounds. Just a man again, and he hits a big three across from our bench to kind of, you know, say we're going to escape. But uh, just so proud of what Johnny Mooney has become. He's, he's put himself in a position to come back as a senior as an All-American candidate. So the Irish beat BC for the 13th straight time, including the sixth straight time on BC's home floor. Before the game, Coach Bray reminded his squad of their team's success in Boston. Here we go, new month. We have always played well in this building. Have fun playing, man. Hub deep three. Got it! Notre Dame is on fire from three. Right side now, it goes to Goodwin. Goodwin knocks down the three. Back to Huff, in the corner, Jogo for three, got it! Another big bucket by Nick Jogo. Possession here now, right? Back to Mooney, Mooney for three, got it! Mr. Mooney does it again! Oh my goodness, for the 13th consecutive time, Notre Dame has beaten Boston College 79-73. Well, you headed down to Miami, quite honestly, really confident as a team. And you come out, you hit five of your first six shots, you jump out to a 13 4 lead. Miami appears to be on their heels, and you're thinking, hey, maybe we're going to get this rolling again. You know, it was maybe it was fool's gold, but again, I thought our frame of mind was great. We were very ready to play. We got out of the gate very well. Again, at any time we can find an offensive rhythm early, it helps this young team feel confident about the other end of the floor, the defensive end of the floor. That rhythm did go away quickly, and the final score was not pretty, but 
the image many would have of just a flat night really didn't occur. You battled throughout the rest of the half, even though you weren't scoring. You didn't give up the lead until 17 minutes in. Yeah, I mean, it was just, it was a bit of a dogfight, and it was frustrating for us. Their ball pressure bothered us. We turned it over too much. We've been overall very good with the basketball this year, but 14 turnovers, too many in the first half, kind of had us on our heels, uh, and, and we just didn't finish the half very well. Mooney had 11 in the half, DJ Harvey had seven, but unlike BC, nobody else stepped up scoring all night. Yeah, we couldn't get even a third score. And, and you know, again, you're going to struggle when you can't get a third guy scoring the ball. Second half, I thought we got some great looks, um, didn't make them. And if you're going to make a run uh, to make it a, a, an interesting game and close the gap, you, you got to make a couple of those open looks. Couldn't do it. Key play late in the half. You're only down by three. You have the ball, but a tough turnover. And then Izundu dunks it yeah. right at the buzzer. That gave Miami a momentum, and it was kind of a a punch to the chin for you guys. It was. It was a tough, tough blow going in at halftime where you maybe could tie it, cut it to one. Uh, in the end, they dunk it right at the buzzer. And, and again, we, we couldn't grab a loose ball, which was kind of the story of the night. We didn't get any of the 50-50 balls uh, that we did in Boston. And um, then, then you're kind of digging out of a hole and you're discouraged in the second half. And you're still down just five, though. You're hoping to come out and yeah. get right back in it. They score six straight quick points, and that's when you're really starting to struggle. Yeah, they uh, they get out of the gate. Likes was really hard for us to deal with. Um, we made a couple substitutions, and I thought Nate Lashevsky gave us some life to maybe give us some hope. But you, you can't end a half and then start a half like that on the road and expect to survive. One bright spot in the second half, however, coming out of a timeout with about seven and a half minutes left, Jawan Durham yeah. went on a tear. He scored eight points in just two minutes, one of them a beautiful jump hook. He started to show signs of getting back to where he was before the injury. Well, we've missed him, Jack. There's no question about it. And, and you know, you talk about a scorer or a third scorer. You know, Jawan can score for us and does. We know he blocks shots, but he can score around the basket for us. And so I'm hoping you know, he is closer to 100% because we need him. So you end up on the short end of a 62-47 score. For Notre Dame to only score 47 points, that's a tough, a tough yeah. outing. So you bookend a week where you began with maybe as well as this team can play offensively at yeah. BC yeah. with maybe as poorly as they can <laughs> play. So as you come out of this week, what do you want to learn both from the BC game but also from the Miami game. Well, I mean, it's two ends of the spectrum. There's no question about it. I mean, we have found that offensive rhythm at times, but not consistently enough. You know, we do a lot of extra shooting because we have had open looks that we have not made. And my, my feeling is we just got to keep getting reps and guys, when they have open looks, they got to take them. And, and maybe we can get this thing into a better rhythm down the stretch. Okay, when we come back, junior Nick Jogo will fire this week's Inside Notre Dame Basketball Fast Break questions at freshman Chris Doherty. It is appropriate the two young men who recently set career highs in game action will handle the questions and answers on this week's Inside Notre Dame Basketball Fast Break. Today, junior Nick Jogo fires the questions at freshman Chris Doherty. This is the Notre Dame Fast Break, Players Edition. I'm Nick, and I got Chris here with me, freshman. Gonna ask him a few questions. All right, Chris, you ready? Yep. All right, what's your uh, favorite food? Uh, Chipotle burrito. Your favorite celebrity crush? Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> North or South Dining Hall? South. Your favorite NBA player? Uh, Kyrie Irving. Your favorite NBA team, not the Celtics? The Celtics. Dream 3v3 team, including you, so two more guys. Um. Liam Nelligan and Nate Lashevsky. Favorite movie? Um, Departed. Favorite ice cream topping? M&M's. What's uh, one song you're listening to right now that you wouldn't want other people to know? Probably Britney Spears. Britney Spears. Your favorite NFL team? Uh, the New England Patriots. If you uh, played a sport other than basketball, what would it be? Football. Who is the best dancer on the team? Probably John Mooney or Nate. Who's the worst dancer? I don't know, I'm not going to answer that. All right. Who's got the worst hygiene on the team? We're all disgusting. We're all disgusting. <laughs> What's your favorite Coach Bray line? Uh, bring the juices. <laughs> What's your favorite Coach Hump line? Seriously? All right. <laughs> favorite spot on campus? Fisher Hall. 
Fisher Hall, yes sir. What you talking about? Uh, best defender on the team. Uh, Rex Luger. Best shooter. Nate. Best dunker. Robbie. Worst shooter. Myself. Fastest on the team. We're all fast. Who's the funniest on the team? Myself, definitely. Who's the least funniest on the team? Probably you. Probably me? Yeah. All right, but um, <laughs> who's the smartest on the team? Um, it's Liam Milligan. Who's a little slow with the books? I'm not gonna say any names. That's all we got for today. Coach, a couple of guys who are playing increasingly important yeah. roles for your team. No question, you know, both of them. Uh, you know, Nick, obviously, with just, uh, he's given us great life lately, and we love Chris Doherty. You know, Chris came out of red shirt mode to help us a little bit, um, but he is a warrior, and he's got an amazingly bright future with us. And he's got a terrific personality. He, he, he is a fun guy to be around, and his teammates love him. This week's Tyrac.com Ask Coach Bray question and the Vivid Seats performance of the week are coming up right after this timeout. It's time now you know, for the experts at Tyrac.com. Question of the week for Coach Bray. We've this week's question We're comes from Kirsten Ousley of Wakarusa, Indiana. Coach, when players go through shooting slumps, how do you keep them confident to not turn down good shots? Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's a great question. And, and we've had that happen at times throughout our program in this year. You know, I get on them. If you turn down a good look, you've got to take it. Probably the two guys that I'm on the most are uh, Dane Goodwin and Nate Lachey because they're still young and they're almost too unselfish and we feel they're very good shooters. But if you've got a good look, you've got to take it. Is it hard to teach a young guy who is a shooter that if you miss a couple, that's okay because you're a shooter and one way to get into a shooting rhythm is to take shots? It is, especially when they're young. You know, you got to coax them. And, and then the best motivation is when their teammates get on them, when they turn stuff down. Not necessarily me. If a, you know, a, a, a TJ Gibbs or a Johnny Mooney says to Dane Goodwin, like, you got to take Tires that. On That's on. very powerful. TireRank.com can help you with that. I guess After scoring a career that. high 21 points in his first start of the season at Boston College, junior Nick Jogo earns the Notre Dame Ticket Exchange, powered by Vivid Seats, Performance of the Week Award for the second straight week. Proud to offer fast, free shipping on all orders over fifty dollars, including tires. Back up top, Jogo D3. Got it. Big bucket by Nick Jogo. Inside Mooney, left side Jogo for three. Got it again. Back the hub in the corner, Jogo for three. Got it. Another big bucket by Nick Jogo. Jogo, the left hand good. Two more. Everybody's trying to get Jogo high fives. Just don't touch me. Don't touch me. I don't want to wake up. When I selected Nick Jogo for last week's performance of the week, he had stepped up and done some nice things. I never expected him to explode to lead the team with 21 points at BC. Well, either did I. I thought he'd give us a great lift, but man, did he really give us a great lift. But as I said earlier in the show, I don't think anyone in our program is more deserving. He's had a great attitude. He had not been part of the rotation as much early. It was more of a youth movement, but he hung in there, kept battling, has become a leader for us, and right now has given us good energy. When we come back, we will preview Notre Dame's rematch with Georgia Tech. Coach, just one game between now and our next taping of yes. this TV show, yeah. and it's a Sunday night game against Georgia Tech, a team you lost to by just two down in Atlanta. Yeah, it was a great game down there. They are really good defensively. Um, they're going to play zone. It's a little bit like facing Syracuse, and so you've got to be good with the ball and get it to the middle, and you got to make some shots over the top. We're back to that. we got to make some shots over the top of that thing. Um, what hurt us down there was their size, their front line. we got to do a better job with our post defense and we got to help our big guys guard their big guy. And then you're going to have a five-day gap between that game and your next game at Virginia. What do you think you can get done during those five well, days? Well, you know, we when we've had these gaps, we've talked about getting back into training camp mode. And when you have a, an inexperienced team, you get back in the gym, you work on individual skills, you work on team stuff. Is there things we want to adjust? You know, during the bye week, we put in a different zone, some different sets. We're kind of back in that mode again next week. And that will do it for this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball. Next week we'll be coming to you from the beautiful Rolfs Athletics Hall, the new practice home of the Notre Dame basketball programs. We hope to show you not only the highlights of that beautiful new practice facility, but also the highlights of a win over Georgia Tech. So until then, for Coach Bray, I'm Jack Nolan. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, go Irish!
Inside Notre Dame Basketball is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame Partners, Coca-Cola, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is also brought to you by Vivid Seats, Canon, Xfinity, Nissan, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, and SiriusXM.